Okay, wonderful. So, Anna? Okay. Or I'm going to mix two languages and then nobody will understand anything. <laughs> okay. Um, hi, I'm very honored to be giving this talk here, especially because I love Make Munich. I've been participating since uh, the first, very first Make Munich from 2013, I think. So, yeah, I've, I uh, love the maker community in Munich. And today I'm going to talk about uh, wearables and e-textiles and where are they currently taking us to and where do we want them to take us. So, um, yeah, I'm a, already taught a couple of things about myself, but uh, here's just a couple of words to my background. Can you hear me all right? Good. Um, so, kind of, I'm on the intersection of different disciplines. On the one hand, I'm uh, an artist and I work with e textiles since 2012. And I also do a lot in educational uh, area. I've been teaching at the LMU since 2012 as well. Um, and I'm giving all sorts of workshops with e-textiles and creative tech for children, for adults. And I'm also very interested in political and social implications of, of technology. So I like to stay critical and ask questions rather than just play around with technology. And um, yes, this is a book I've published, which you can also find on my booth if you visit me later. And I'm selling off the last copies of it. So uh, if you need to be quick if you want to get one. So let's start with what the actual difference between wearables and e-textiles, because maybe you hear these terms a lot and they kind of get mixed up. Well, I mean, e-textiles is kind of part of wearables, but what's actually, what's different about these two terms? So when I say wearable tech, you probably imagine something which is encapsulated in some sort of plastic or a rubber casing and something which is external to the body. So you wear it on top, either a fitness tracker or VR glasses or um, health, some kind of medical tracker, some kind of proprietary software for health or for fitness or what have you. And these are um, the gentlemen who look very elegant and who termed the, um, coined the term wearable technology, the MIT Media Lab in the 90s. So they kind of started to experimenting with these gadgets you can put in your body and they kind of imagine themselves as cyborgs and this is what to them the future of wearable technology looked like in the 90s. And it was not until the designer Maggie Orth uh, joined the group that they started integrating textiles using textile techniques into garments. So here you see a musical jacket which they embroidered with conductive thread. So when you touch the digits, you hear musical output. So basically, they made capacitive sensors, what we use on smartphones now, the kind of technology for touch screens. So e-textiles, in contrast to wearables, are mostly, they have mostly integrated electronics into garments. They're flexible, they're kind of more pleasant to wear. And they also um, combine these kind of two pools of knowledge. So you need to know how to solder, you need to know the electronics, but you also deal with traditional crafts like weaving, stitching, sewing. And usually designers uh, who do something with e-textiles work with conductive thread or conductive fabric or resistive fabric. And it's normally, it feels like a normal thread and it's mixed with either copper or silver or nickel. But it's still kind of, it's highly conductive and to some thread you can even solder directly. But it's still very flexible and you can use it in a sewing machine, you can use it in an embroidery machine. You can do all sorts of things with it. So why am I talking about social wearables? What is, the term social mean to me. Um, right now, kind of the main thing we see about wearables is what 
big companies bring to the market, kind of proprietary software and hardware, and they kind of design products with people in mind who have a similar background as them. So let's say Silicon Valley, um, young, healthy people with a kind of well-educated, with a steady income, but you don't see many designs who address minorities or people from diverse communities who are kind of just less represented by this big tech companies or by the fashion industry. Um, so, but first to kind of be able to look to the future or current projects, let's look at the history um, of, of uh, fashion and of um, textiles and electronics. Because textiles um, were always uh, connected to technology. I mean, it's not, it's not a new combination because many people ask why is this weird kind of symbiosis between the two disciplines. But actually the industrial revolution started with the textile industry. And here you see the Jacquard's loom, which was invented, invented in 1804. And for coding the weaving patterns, it used punch cards, which were later in the 20th century used by IBM until the 1980s to write, um, to store programs or data on computers. So it was kind of taken from the textile industry. And here's another fact, with it, which is even less known. Uh, when NASA was um, uh, sending Apollo to the moon, they needed some uh, sort of computer to fit on a spaceship because back then computers were huge and they could take up several rooms. Um, so they needed some kind of very uh, condensed technology and also something which would withstand vibrations very well. So what you see here is a core rope memory a memory unit of a computer which was woven by women in factories. And the MIT um, coders named it jokingly the LOL technology, little old ladies. Because it was woven by hand, the zeros and the ones, and it took ages to program this kind of memory unit. So I find it a very nice example how if we combine different traditional crafts and combine the knowledge from these different crafts, we achieve better results rather than being isolated in uh, just, you know, this tech innovation bubble or just staying in the textile. It's when we merge different disciplines that we discover interesting new ideas. Um, so uh, now I, I would like to talk about some of projects I've been doing. Um, this is a course I've been teaching at LMU uh, with Kunst und Multimedia, Art and Multimedia students. And they had to develop um, some sort of social wearables for different groups of people in mind. And here are some nice projects they came up with. For example, a color glove for blind people or visually impaired, which would recognize color with a color sensor and translate it into sound. So for example, if you want to go shopping and you, are not sh you can't see what color the clothing is, you could hold, hold out your glove and it would sample the color and translate it into sound, which I find a very nice idea. Or another group of students designed a brooch for elderly people, which on the one hand detects if um, person falls over because elderly people stumble very often. It has a built-in tilt sensor, but it also has this hidden buttons uh, which by pressing them, elderly, elderly people can send their family a message. For example, I'm feeling lonely right now, can you call me? Or I have dinner ready, come over to my place and kind of nice communication tools. And this is my colleague, Lara Grant, who is based in the San Francisco area. And she's also been working with her students on designing um, these uh, e-textile interfaces for a girl named Sarah, who has cerebral palsy. 
and she wished for a glove which would on the one hand help her hold a pencil steadily but on the other hand give her some other ways to communicate with her environment so she explicitly asked for a design with hearts and with purple light and students came up with uh, different devices and this is a very exciting idea to make a one-on-one -on -one interface rather than what kind of big companies are hoping for or startups to make one product which fits many people to scale something. This is a completely the other way around approach. So you have one person and you design different devices just with this particular person. And um, and if I met with her at the eTextile summer camp where we were participating at a panel on social wearables. And this is also where uh, we also met Adrian and we all teamed up to make a project I'm showing uh, at the Make Munich, which is called Flexibility. So this is uh, my most recent project. And we're developing a flexible modular kit for people with physical disabilities who cannot use a standard keyboard or a standard mouse and need a very individual solution. But we tried not to, make, to come up with a solution for just one person, but think of a flexible concept where you can adjust and cut the sensor to the size you need it to be or make a button in the size, shape and height you want it to be. And it was supported by Wear Sustain, by the EU funding. And we had consultants in Munich. I was working with Phoenix Parade, where I had a consultant with a very limited range of movements, and she requested a tiny keyboard. So we came up with this touchpad, which you can program in various ways. And she could even pick the keys she wanted to have. She would use more often than the others. Right, so this is the testing. And it's all made with the flexible uh, electronic textiles, conductive or resistive. And this is our consultant in San Francisco. She has a very opposite requirements. She has very big range of movements, so she wanted something squishy and robust. So we came up with this button design where I you can assemble it to your needs uh, in the size you want it to have. It has a 3D printed frame and a conductive casing, a conductive sensor and a textile casing. And everything is available online. It's an open source project, so you could even print it out for yourself and assemble it or let your family assemble it. Here you see also, uh, you can cut a bend sensor or a switch sensor to the size you want it to be. This is a capacitive sensor, which also consists of copper fabric, which is ironed on standard fabric. And last autumn, we have been showing this project at the Ars Electronica, but right now, the funding is over, so if anybody has an idea where <laughs> to get some additional funding, we would love to continue our work on this project. But yeah, right now this is the first stage. And I wanted to show you some other inspiring projects from kind of what wearables can do with social communities. And this is a, I guess the video won't work, so I will just tell you about this project. It's a Bolivian doctor who employs Bolivian women to weave, to needle weave heart implants for children. So these implants, they are very delicate to make, so they couldn't be produced industrially. So there are hand weavers who use this traditional Bolivian techniques to make this very delicate weaving, which then is inserted into the heart and fills up holes in the children's hearts which are, have a defect. And this is um, an artist, Amor Munoz, with her project Yucatec, Energy by Hand. And she went into a 
village where traditional uh, Maya women live, and she also used their traditional craft and taught them how to make solar panels and kind of taught them also the basics of electronics. And what they did, they went out on the streets and kind of, uh, it was more of a performance, but they were selling this, um, offering people to charge their mobile phones with this mobile solar panels right in the middle of the street. So these are different strategies how to empower traditional crafts and kind of with new technologies take them back on board and um, show them new possibilities and get them interested and have their own say in our society. And this is a very good friend of mine who's doing a PhD in London at the Open University and she's researching, um, she's weaving sensors with people who are visually impaired or blind. So she's um, exploring this handcraft and they also um, do some storytelling. So with the sensors you activate also the stories they choose to illustrate. Or also kind of how would um, the tactile interface be for somebody who cannot see anything. And another colleague of mine, Kristi Kusk from Estonia, and she, with her students, made some interfaces for a hospital uh, for mental health for children, and they also came up with therapeutical designs which are interactive and involve textiles. Here, for example, you see, well, this, is, this doesn't involve um, electronics, but this is a duvet which helps against depression, so you can adjust the weight it puts on top of you to make you feel more comfortable and safe, so you can adjust it by putting more or less pillows into the pockets. And um, another project from California is a, it's a muscle suit for elderly people which helps for example, if you cannot get out of bed in the morning, it supports your muscles and gives them some more power to get some daily tasks done. And this is another project by Christi Kusk and Martin Tin Böhmer uh, from Eindhoven University. And they made this vibration therapy suit, which is woven, so it's very comfortable to wear and it heals the body through vibrations. So what are the key elements of the, all the projects I've been showing so far? What, what is the short social element for me to sum it up? It's about inclusion, including various communities rather than having just one target group in mind. It's about empowering traditional crafts and traditional knowledge. It's about affordability and knowledge sharing, and it's about openness. Rather than making proprietary software and patents, it's about sharing and letting everybody have their part. And why do people, why do we use wearables for this kind of projects? Because they're interactive, they're very adjustable. They're also familiar through this textile element. They might be comfortable through the, if something is wooly or knitted. It's um, something we know very well. And yes, they're tactile. So um, what problems will be possible to tackle with the wearables in the future? Um, so the area where already many things are happening are artificial prosthetics. So for example, through artificial intelligence, the communication between prosthetics and will be uh, go directly to the human brain and will help us move uh, our limbs more sophisticated than we could do it before. Also the one-on-one -on -one production could also save us from this incredible waste we're creating with fashion industry. So we could rather kind of print things on demand rather than mass produce them and then throw most of it away. And maybe we can make working conditions for people who work there better. So what I want you uh, to think about after this talk is to ask yourself, 
what kind of future do you do you want technology to shape? Where do you want uh, technology to take us? What's kind of the best use we can make out of it? Thank you very much. Thank you, Anna, for this wonderful, very inspirational talk about your projects, which are fantastic, and all the others you just collected on your way. Um, so I think we have still some time for some questions from the audience. Are there questions to Anna? Anyway, she has a booth to visit and to also buy her book, The Wearables yes. for Makers. Yes. So I have the flexibility interfaces at my booth if you want to touch them. <laughs> so, but maybe one question for me, like the flexibility program you had, this, this project, is it really like running out of funding now? Is yes. it like that's it for time for being? Now. For now. Wow. I mean, it was uh, very restricted. It was just six months, and then oh we had to deal with a lot of European bureaucracy. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, we didn't come as far as we wanted to. With okay. It. So, the next step would be to find a, a next funding, funding. To, to actually bring it on the market in some, somehow. Yes, and also to fund time because it was a big challenge to have this great distance communication because we could only Skype in late evening in Europe and I. <laughs> With little children, I'm always super exhausted yeah. in the evenings. <laughs> okay, I understand. Okay, but, so there has yeah. to be somehow, there has to be a way to continue this project yes, because I def definitely, be we need that. Yes. <laughs> okay, no more questions for Anna. So visit her at your booth. Which number is that? Like, I don't know, but it's in the area of creativity, art and sound. It's okay, right you will here. find that. Okay, yes. thank you very much again. Thank, thank you, you for coming.